Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Timmy Tayo, and I'm here once again to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now, the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Now, if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, or if you know me personally, you may be asking us, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this particular daily devotional? Why not another one? Because we have many great Christian daily devotionals in the body of Christ. Why have I chosen to share this particular one? The reason I'm sharing this is because the Spirit of God instructed me to do so as I prepared to enter into the year 2020. That was two years ago. And I was able to start that assignment. I call it an assignment in the month of June 2020. So I shared the devotional for some months in 2020, some months in 2021. And in this year, 2022, I resumed sharing for and from the months of July onwards. Amen. So all those videos I started sharing from all the videos of the, the messages that were shared from 2020 are all loaded on my YouTube channel. I will encourage you to view uh, those videos. You will definitely find topics that appeal to your spirit and you'll be blessed when you watch them. Why? Because the scriptures are inspired by the spirit of God. Amen. Holy men wrote as the spirit of God moved them. Now, how did I get to know Pastor Devoy? Pastor Devoy led me to Christ in October 1997 many years ago when i was an undergraduate in the university of lagos in nigeria in west africa and his unique style of teaching is that he will give you a few scriptures from the bible he'll give you a memory verse when you combine those two pieces of scripture it helps you to understand the body of the text and what the spirit of god is saying to the reader of the daily devotional on that particular day now i always say that a daily devotional does not replace your personal study of the word of god as a christian we have to develop as christians we have to develop the habit of um, getting into the Bible on a daily basis. You know, it's a habit that we have to form. Many of us are, were busy, you know, work, but the Spirit of God helps us to be able to form that habit and to sustain it. Amen. Praise God. Now, today is Thursday, August the 18th, and the title of today's daily devotional is Letter to the Philadelphian Church, Part 1. Letter to the Philadelphian Church, Part 1. Now, um, if you this, if you're just starting this series, uh, just let you know that this series actually started um, from the seventh of August and is spanning through two weeks till the twenty first of August. Now, and in this this fourteen days, uh, Pastor Debo is explaining to us the details of the letters of uh, John to the seven churches in Asia Minor that were based on the revelations that Jesus Christ gave him on the island of Patmos. So you see, you want to. Especially on the seventh, when Pastor gave us a background, you want to view those videos so that we can continue along till the twenty-first when we finish. Now we've done the letter to the church in Ephesus, part one, part two. We've done the letter to the church in Smyrna, part one, part two. We've done the letter to the church in Pergamos. We've done also the letter to the church of Tyra, Tyra, part one, part two, part three, and now we've done also Sardis, part one and part two, and we're now in. Um, the Philadelphia Church, part one, and we're going to be doing part two tomorrow. So you need to watch those videos so you can get a very, this is very important. I said in the other videos that you see um, all the other books in the Bible, men just wrote. They just knew God was moving through them and they wrote. They didn't know those scriptures, those their writings will become scripture. So they wrote as, Paul then explained to us that they wrote as the Spirit of God moved them. But the book of Revelation is different because it was Jesus who appeared to John and said, write. So he was the one who initiated the book of Revelation. And that's why we must give it full attention. Now, our scripture reading is taken from the book of Revelation chapter 3. Let's go there very quickly. Revelation 3 verses 7 to 13, just seven verses. I normally read from the traditional King James Version. But I think today the Passion Translation is doing um, a very good piece of work here. So what you need to do is read King James first. And then by the time you read the, the Passion Translation, you will be able to understand it better. So just go through the reading of God's word. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 to 13. All the words are in red because Jesus is the one speaking. Hallelujah. Now write the following to the messenger of the congregation in Philadelphia. For these are the solemn words of the Holy One, the True One, who has David's key, who opens doors that, no, that none can shut and who closes doors that none can open. I know all that you have done. Now I've set before you a wide open door that none can shut, for I know that you possess only a little power, yet you've kept my word and have never denied my I haven't denied my name. Watch how I deal with those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews, but they are not, for they are lying. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and acknowledge how much I have loved you. 
because you passionately kept my message of perseverance or my message of patience, I will also keep you from the hour of proving or testing that is coming to test every person on the earth. But I come quickly. So cling tightly to what you have so that no one may seize your crown of his of victory. For the one who is victorious, I will make you to be a pillar in the sanctuary of my God, permanently secure. I will write on you the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem descending from my God out of heaven. And I will write my own name on you. So the one who has, whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is now saying to all the churches. So the one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what, what the Spirit is now saying to all the churches. In, in, to all the churches. So the regular King James Version says, He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And here he's saying that the one whose heart is open is the one that will hear what the Spirit is saying. Okay, so I said in the, um, you see, even though Jesus Christ sent this message to the seven churches, there are not only seven churches in the world. So, but all the churches will come under these seven categories of strengths and weaknesses. Sometimes they could have characteristics like the Ephesian church or some characteristics like the Smyrna church, like that, you know. So you will fall under one, some of these categories. Okay, now the Philadelphian church, let me just categorize the last three churches, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Bad report, good report, bad report. Bad report for Sardis, good report for Philadelphia, and very bad report for Laodicea. Okay, so Laodicea was a small church because... Um, they, they were, it was situated in a place where there was a mountainous area and um, that that the mountains, they, they were earthquakes. They had earthquakes often. They were prone to earthquakes because of the earth's crust. And the people lived on edge. They were always ready to move because of the situations in which they found themselves. And sometimes when the earthquakes happened, there was a very serious earthquake. And, you know, they had to, Rome had to, to um, re, tax relief. They had to get tax relief for a whole year to help them rebuild the city so the allowed this the philadelphia church was always on the move and they were always ready you understand and depended very heavily on god now the memory verse is first peter 1 7 that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perished though it be tried with fire might be might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of jesus christ you know so um they had the they, they they you know it's, that's not a very good life where you don't know <laughs> when the mountain you know so they had trials consistently and this verse in first peter says that when we go through trials you know it's because god is testing us and that we're going to come forth as gold you know when god is done and that's why the bible says in the book of james that we should count it all joys when we go through trials now pastor says that jesus was full of praises for the philadelphian church he also gave them several promises only warning them to hold fast such a beautiful letter in AD 17, Philadelphia experienced a lot of earthquakes. The tremors kept the people of Philadelphia, Philadelphia constantly alert. So, because the you know the earthquakes were really bad, you know the mountain would spew um, lava, and and the lava actually made the area very fertile. But the people were always you know their houses destroyed, you know. But the church depended heavily on God, and God blessed them. You know, He never found Jesus Christ never found anything wrong with the Philadelphian church, unlike the, Ephes the church in Ephesus, where they, they had a good report, and then Jesus Christ, you know, rebuked them for having forgotten their first love, and, you know, sadness is on a different level. Now, when the people have, when people have no troubles, they feel so relaxed, and assume that they don't need God. That is why First Peter 1, 7 says that trials come to strengthen our faith. The reason you see so much revival in Africa these days than in the developed world is probably because because probably that what we have that, that what we have to pray for in the de developing countries is always provided by the respective governments of the nations in the developed world. Thus, we have no choice than to do as David did in Psalm 121 verses 1 to 3, to look up to the Lord from whence comes our help. So you see, um, what Pastor is saying here, that I see um, the reason that well, there's so much revival in, in Africa is because of the deep poverty that majority of the people have such that you know even medical 
facilities are not available. Some people are suffering hunger. How much more having money to go to the hospital? So all be all they can do, all some of those poor people do is that they lift, they look onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith, to help implement the word that they have read in the Bible that says Jesus Christ is the Savior today, today and forever, the great physician. You know, so and they insist on it and they get their healing. Meanwhile, here in the you know United Kingdom, for example, we have NHS. You know, so if a person is sick, you go to the hospital. You know, and you know it's free. The only thing you pay for is your drug. So there's no. Some people don't have the opportunity to put that faith to work. Okay. So and I remember a man of God who went to one of the southern African countries for a crusade. You know, and when he was going, when he got there, you know, the people were all lined up on the streets. And just welcome him, welcoming him, and he was so happy because he thought that you know God had God was honoring him by bringing all those people to, um, you know, visit him. Later in the evening, when the crusade started, he realized that the reason why they were healing him was because he had a lot of sick people. They knew he had the healing anointing, so they brought all their sick, the living and the dead, half dead, and brought them to the crusade because now this is all their option. They don't have access deep poverty, and they depended heavily. And God always comes through when you put your faith in God; you will not be put to shame, you know, and when we go to trials like the Philadelphia church did there's nothing wrong with pain count it all joys when you go to trials many of us have gone through rough times and have come out better we've learned things as a result of that trial such that we lift up our hands and say thank you lord for what i've gone through because there's a dimension of pain that is a gift pastor says that once in a while when god sees that a christian is beginning to fall into spiritual sleep he sends trials to wake him up I believe one of the reasons Solomon started worshipping idols is that after building the temple, he became idol and forgot God. You must always look for new mountains to conquer. You must always say like Caleb in Joshua 14, 12, give me this mountain. Don't ever feel relaxed as if you don't need God. If after building the temple, Solomon had decided to advance the kingdom of God further, if, you, if he would have had the constant need to rely on God, if you've made a lot of money, Use the money to start organizing outreaches for the sinners and the points of throwing parties up and down. Just remain busy for God, asking for new mountains to conquer all the time, and you'll never forget the Lord your God. Amen. So Solomon is a very good example. You know, this was a guy who Jesus, the Lord appeared to him twice in visions, you know, and God blessed him, you know, and along the line, he built a very great temple, you know, for the Lord God, his God, and but somehow when he became comfortable and idle, he forgot and began to bow down to other idols and began to marry the daughter of the king of Pharaoh. You know, he forgot the Lord of his, the Lord his God, you know. So he became idle and that was why he, he began to do all the silly things he was doing. After he built, built the temple, he built a very magnificent house for himself, gold this, gold that, gold throne, everything. But you see, because instead of just doing that and stopping there, he could have continued by building a, a another beautiful temple in Dan, another beautiful temple in, in, in Bathsheba, you know. And that would have kept him busy to keep up in his, his service to God. But no, he got idol. And what happened? He forgot the Lord his God. You know, God said to the children of Israel, when you go into the promised land and you begin to inherit vineyards that you did not plant and begin to live in houses that you did not build, remember... Lord your God, because it is He that giveth the power to get wealth. You know, so sometimes when you're too comfortable, you can become slack. And then God sends, like the eagle, who doesn't want to fly? Baby eagle doesn't want to fly. At a certain time, the mother just comes and turns the net. Otherwise, he wouldn't learn how to fly. History also tells us that the Philadelphian church was a mission-minded one. The members were always witnessing and sending people out on missions. When the Mohammedans came to Asia Minor and all the churches collapsed the philadelphian church stood firm there is still a church in philadelphia to this date this tells us very clearly that if you are always witnessing if you are always winning souls the devil will not be able to make you to fall so even till now there's still a church in philadelphia why because the church is a soul winning church you know they were always carrying out missions they didn't have much money they you know jesus christ said i i, I know you have little power but you have still not denied my name so that active mission for the gospel, despite the fact the things they were going through, you know, and the uncertainty of their shelter and everything, and their houses and their villages, they still made sure that they were on top in missions and therefore they were actively working for God, you know. So our pastor says in the key point here, if you want your faith to last to the end, become a soul winner.
Now, many of us used to do evangelism before you come down from the bus at a certain place, you speak to somebody about Christ, you know, but now that you have a car, you just drive past, you know, and, you know, you realize that you've drawn back with regards to evangelism, but the Spirit of God is reviving us again in Jesus' name. So let us pray. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you revive us again in the name of Jesus, that we may call upon you and that we may do the work of an evangelist in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Spirit of God. Quicken us from within, Almighty God. Strengthen us with might by the Spirit of God in our inner man. Father, Lord, set fire on our hearts, Almighty God, for the lost, that we may go out to where the sinners are and win souls. Father, it's not by power or by might. As much as is as is in us, we are ready by the Spirit of God to preach the gospels also to the to them that are lost within our 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 towns and our villages in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we receive that infilling of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, that we may be able to go out like the Philadelphian church to win souls and to trust in God and count it all joys as we go through trials. Father, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. God bless you. My name again is Sister Tayo. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please share this freely on your social media platforms and the Lord bless you. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.